So uh, in our next lecture, we're going to discuss uh, population theories. And so this is the, the next section of the course. Um, I'm going to, to, to carry on. So today, specifically, we're going to talk about the theory of demographic transition. Um, so this theory basically aims to explain why population growth rates are changed over time. In general, as time passes, the birth and death rates of a country drop. And then we'll see why. Uh, you can probably guess why, but in general, over time, it does drop. So the stage one of the, the demographic uh, transition theory stage, um, in general, a country in this stage has a relatively stable birth rate. And the death rate changes depending on various factors. So depending on whether or not there are famines, there are wars, there are droughts, there are floods, there are diseases. All these things are contingent upon um, if a death rate will change. So obviously if there's war, there's going to be a higher death rate. If there's a drought, higher death rate, floods, natural disasters, that sort of thing. So this is all contingent upon um, outside forces. Sweden's um, chart here to the right um, has kept, they've kept records of their population since 1740. Its birth and death rate does not change much as its death rate, which is reacted to environmental changes mostly over time. So depending on the weather and outside controlling forces. So you can see here that since 1740, they've, they've kind of kept and moved through stage one, stage two, stage three, and into stage four, which is kind of interesting. They've kept records for that long. Stage two is the Greek transition stage. Um, this is the fluctuating birth and death rates in this stage. It means the population is not growing. Uh, there are periods of natural increase and natural decrease depending on the situation of the time. Um, so this is this is early. You can see it going up and down here. Um, and and as as we mentioned, there's reasons for although we do have a stable birth rate, there is a reason why uh, usually outside forces are playing to keep the birth and death rates in flux all the time. The population period rate for pre-transition population is easy to identify. So here, uh, it's easy to, to know because uh, big birth rate at the bottom and steady, working its way up. So it's usually got a big bottom at the pyramid and it's working its way up. Um, so the idea here um, is, is, is in the beginning, so it will affect uh, as the, the pyramid grows. In effect. So this is what we consider the pre transition. Stage two is the early transition. So the main feature of this stage is a very dramatic drop in the death rate. Um, death control is sometimes what this is what this is called. The birth rate stays high, but the death rate drops dramatically. So for example, up here you see birth rate is pretty consistent, yet the death rate has dropped significantly for whatever reason. Um, Countries that have experienced this stage more recently have much more significant drop in death rates. So as you can see. So the idea of what we call um, germ theory is, is what we had to, to do with it. Um, Ignar Semwise, I'm not saying that right at all, um, was a doctor who saw that cleaning hands actually reduced the death rate of birthing mothers from 20% to 1%. So something as simple as proper hygiene can have such a dramatic impact on the population, which is pretty crazy when you think about it. Uh, so the population pyramids for countries in this stage still have a, a very wide base, but the sides do not taper as much in the pre-transition charts. So um, you'll see there, there's a slowing as you get up further, the people are living longer. So although yes, it's still tiny up here, it's slowly getting bigger around here. So, um, the main feature for this stage here shows my questions that I can't ask you because you're not here. So, uh, the in stage three, the significant drop in the birth rate of a country, and this is called birth control. So, this is um, why, and I would normally ask you why you think this would happen. Um, is because, 
going too far here. Back it up. Families are smaller, but they're better off in this instance. So people now are able to control the amount of children that they want to have. So instead of having five children they can't afford, they maybe have one children they can't afford. So the quality of life improves and they taper off and they can choose to not have children. So the population at this stage is uh, much blockier. Um, it's becoming more equal number of people at all age groups until the older ages. So you can kind of see at this point, uh, it's, it's kind of chunking out and people are, and there's a declining birth rate. So it's declining death rate, but it's kind of chunkier in the middle. Uh, stage four is the post-transition stage. In this stage, the birth rate has dropped to be close to the death rate. The population's natural increase rate is zero or very close to it. And so this is as stable as we get at this point. You see here, population changes in Mexico and Sweden. So the population uh, pyramid at this stage is very distinct. It's almost vertical. With slow taper for the older ages, uh, there is a debate among dem demographers that there may be actually a fifth stage that we just haven't entered into yet. So summary. Here's a summary of the transition theory. Uh, so again, you'll notice stage one is the expanding high birth rate, but there's still a fluctuation with the birth and death rate of the day. Stage two is expanding because we've stopped uh, we found a death rate control of some sort, so people are not dying. See, stage three is uh, we've now got a bit of a declining birth rate, but things are pretty stage. Um, see, and then stage four, of course, is contracting less births, less deaths, becoming more chunky. Here, okay, that is the demographic stages in a nutshell. So, hopefully, you kept up with me. That it actually wasn't too too long on that. And we're going to talk more about population theories. Okay, so we're going to carry on talking about population theories. And this is differing ideas about population growth. So there are two categories for ideas about population growth. There are the optimistic and the pessimistic side about, about each of these. So the, we're going to start with the optimistic. So the first is the Copernicans. Uh, so this idea here is that technology will solve all of our problems. There is a new revolution coming. And whatever this revolution is, it's going to solve all our issues that we have from overpopulation, and we're going to be fine. So these are the, the Copernicans. Uh, Bogue's theory of demographic regulation. The population will stop growing once Earth reaches its carrying capacity. Um, obviously, population uh, in the natural world regulates itself. So uh, humans impact natural populations badly sometimes, uh, while other times uh, not so badly. But uh, the idea behind Bogue's theory of demographic regulation is that we will just stop when Earth is ready to stop, then we will not have any more population growth. The other side, the pessimistic view of this, and obviously the ones that everyone likes so much more, are the Malthusian views. Um, Malth <laughs> if, you, if you watch the little video prior to this, which, if you haven't, stop now. Go watch the little um, uh, his, about Methusian views. Uh, the idea for Methusian views is that population will go uh, geometrically. Food production will grow rhythmically. So the idea between the Methusian view is that we cannot support any more people. Uh, and that actually we're probably due for something to kill us all which uh, ironically is perhaps happening in at the moment. <laughs> uh, William Catton uh, introduced carrying capacity as a concept. So the idea of carrying capacity is how much can an environment support in terms of population, and once it hits carrying capacity, it won't support any more population. Well, technically, we are way beyond our, our um, carrying capacity at the moment, and uh, that's not a good thing. Uh, so the, we are using up our non-renewable resources, which means future generations will not have any, and the phantom carrying capacity is what we are in. Uh, we can't survive in this, is basically what they're saying in terms of carrying capacity. We are beyond anything that we can survive at the moment. So what does that mean for us? I'm not sure. Uh, so in terms of the human population project, 
Estimates take into account that the fact that the transition has occurred faster than predicted. We're actually beyond what we need to be. So there you are, the population theories in a nutshell. Please make sure you watch the video if you haven't watched the video uh, about our friend Methuselah because it is very, very interesting and they can explain it far better than I can. Okay, that's it for me. We'll see you guys in the next lecture.